I'm pleased to introduce our next panelist. We have with us Heike Reigelt, who is the head of investor relations and sustainable finance at the World Bank, and Andrea Dorr, who is the head of, head of funding and capital markets. Thank you both for joining us. I'd like to start with Andrea to give us an overview of the issuers that the World Bank works with towards its goals. Thanks, Anari. Um, first, I would like to thank, to, um, thank Bloomberg for hosting um, this event and National Bank of Canada for sponsoring this event. I'd also like to thank our audience, um, which I understand um, represent um, several asset class um, uh, um, for their participation in this um, event as well. I'm head of funding at the World Bank, um, specifically IBRD and IDA, the International Bank for Construction and Development and the International Development Association. Maybe I could probably start by giving you just a brief overview of those two entities. Um, I've been at the World Bank for over for almost two decades now, and my primary function in the last decade has been um, raising funds for the bank, leading the team that we raise funds for the bank in the capital um, market. Um, IBRD and IDA, um, part of the uh, World Bank Group, have the same development uh, mandate. Basically, the mandate is really to uh, 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 the mandate of extreme poverty and to promote share prosperity in a sustainable manner. So basically, the bank has a twin goal, which is aligned with the UN Sustainable Development Goal. The World Bank, as many of you may be aware, is the largest source of development finance and expertise globally. One of the key differences between those two institutions, IBRD and IDA, uh, is that IBRD main goal, they both have a development mandate, but the main goal of IBRD is to really fund um, fund projects in middle-income countries, um, compared to either which fund project in the lower-income countries. IBRD, in terms of the capital markets, and we'll go into more detail, is that IBRD raised funds on a sustainable basis globally. In fact, um, we have seen, um, I met many of you may have seen IBRD not just in the global, uh, other global markets, but also in the Canadian um, dollar market, which is an important source of funding for IBRD. We'll go into more details when it comes to um, the funding in, in the Canadian dollar market, but I just wanted to, to, to give you a brief overview in terms of the funding program for IBRD and IDA. When it comes to uh, the funding programs as well, uh, maybe it'll be useful to talk about the kinds of uh, kinds of programs you are uh, raising funding for. I know that when you take an approach to these funding programs, you tend to take an integrated approach. But what does that mean? Uh, what is the array of financing you are seeking uh, to to help find find funds for? Um, so the World Bank, as Andrea said. Um has a mandate to eradicate extreme poverty and boost shared prosperity. And we work with our member countries in many different sectors, uh, from health to sustainable infrastructure to education. So as we raise funds in the capital markets, we're raising the funds to be able to finance these types of programs. And uh, we engage with investors to help them understand the, the purpose, to understand the various initiatives, the various sectors that the World Bank um, uh, supports in our member countries. And we've um, had very good success with uh, Canadian investors, as an example, um, in engaging on specific themes and topics. Well, let's get a little more specific about that here. How do you, how do you engage around specific topics, for example, gender or climate change? So investors are interested in using their funds to support challenges, development challenges. When they look at the World Bank, they're interested in not just the financial product, um, which is they can buy um, liquid uh, bonds, um, the, the World Bank is rated AAA, um, but they can also support specific purposes. So uh, you mentioned gender and climate change. Um, we engage with investors around topics that are of specific interest to them. And uh, a few years ago, for example, we issued a Canadian dollar-denominated benchmark bond that helped raise awareness for, for gender. And we spoke to investors and explained to them how the World Bank works across sectors on a theme like gender, 
how it's important in all projects from uh, transportation to education um, and giving examples of, of projects that we finance. And so when investors buy our bonds, they're supporting the approach that we take. Um, now, you mentioned it's a holistic and integrated approach. Uh, we call the bonds sustainable development bonds because that label helps investors understand what they're supporting overall. And then we pick certain themes to raise awareness for these themes. And oftentimes we connect them to the sustainable development goals as well. Uh, Andrea, I'll start with you on this next question, though I want to hear both of your responses. Uh, COVID, when, when the world was hit with COVID, everybody had to make some changes. But uh, I understand both of you have pivoted very quickly at the World Bank to integrate COVID and healthcare-related initiatives into your goals. What has that looked like? Thank you, Yes. One of the things that the bank, as I mentioned at the beginning, the main purpose of the bank is, um, is the development mandate of the bank. And COVID uh, um, uh, um, has really put the bank at the core in, in its terms of its response. Um, trying to help countries combat um, the impact of COVID, which have been very difficult, particularly the developing countries have been hit. It's a global pandemic, so obviously um, everybody globally have been hit, but particularly the, 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 the developing countries that have less of a safety net compared to um, the developing um, the developed countries. So the World Bank had to uh, um, respond uh, uh, very rapidly um, to be able to help uh, uh, um, our clients combat um, these issues. We, uh, this um, certainly impacted our funding um, program because we had to raise um, additional funding um, to um, additional funding for that purpose. And one of the things that we did and, uh, is to, and, and one of the things that we did is to really um, um, highlight to investors um, the purpose, the impact that their funds would have created in this particular moment. Um, so one of the themes that we highlighted was health. And Heike could probably go into, into more details in, in, um, on, in that regard. Sure. So as Andrea mentioned, um, we, we quickly um, mobilized our colleagues from around the world. And uh, the focus in the first stage was relief and health programs. So our colleagues are working with our member countries around the world on health programs. And um, there was a big push to provide more funding towards the immediate needs. For example, um, similar things that we were dealing with in developed countries, um, providing financing for personal protective equipment, providing financing to set up testing labs, expanding um, intensive care units. So these types of uh, projects were, were financed um, at the very initial stages. And then it evolved to um, uh, restoring systems, for example, uh, safety nets. So providing cash transfers to people who needed them most. Um, and then another phase is the um, sustainable and resilient uh, recovery for the entire economy. So it was three stages. Um, and the first one was really focused on this immediate health response. Um, but, you know, countries will be dealing with the effects of COVID for a very long time. Um, so, so the response and the way we work with the member countries is really a partnership. Um, and it's, it, it's a long-term partnership. Um, so, the, 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 so the response, I would say, goes through, through different phases. So, uh, given that this is a Canadian fixed income conference, I'll be curious to hear your thoughts around the Canadian market and uh, Canadian uh, denominated bonds versus the U.S. and Europe. Yes, um, the World Bank has been very active in the Canadian dollar market. In fact, I was going through our records and I realized that we actually have a 100 year bond um, that we issued in 1984. Um, still on our books. I don't think, um, uh, when I look at across any of the currencies, I think that's probably the longest maturity bond that we have on our books. So we have been um, in the Canadian market for, for several decades. Um, more recently, if you look at over the last probably five or probably 10 years, our engagement with Canadian investors have increased exponentially. Um, we have been able to issue a more sort of benchmark transaction, which is more public um, transaction distributed 
not only to Canadian investors, but also to investors globally that have um, an interest in Canadian dollars or, in, or, or include Canadian dollars in their portfolio as well. So one of the things that we have managed to do is to build a full yield curve across uh, a, a full yield curve in Canadian dollar. Last year, we had an extremely successful um, issuance year in Canada, issuing the highest ever, over 5 billion Canadian dollars. We saw engagement across the asset class. Uh, we saw engagement from, from the bank treasuries, from corporates, um, from official institutions. And so domestically from the Canadian market, we also saw quite a bit of engagement. Uh, in some cases, we saw like 50% of the bonds being placed offshore. Um, and across, when I say globally, you know, Asia, Europe, um, the Middle East. So we are really, uh, this fits uh, into our goal to diversify our investor base. And Canada being, you know, so close to the U.S., we're headquartered in Washington. And we have had um, several engagements and attended many conferences in Canada, have very intensive engagement with, um, with investors, both for IBRD. And more recently, we have started the engagement with IDA, because IDA is a, is a new um, entry to the, the capital market. So we um, started uh, um, access to capital markets two years ago. So it's a market that's important for us. It's a market that we have made, you know, an enormous uh, uh, inroads. Um, it's a, a market that we see increased engagement in investor, not only just from a financial return, but also in terms of impact. They're interested in, 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 in the World Bank development activity and where the funds are being there. So, and we'll continue to engage investors. One of the points that I'd like to make is although IDA, IDA have not accessed um, the Canadian dollar market, um, but in the near future, um, our, our goal is also to, to, to engage um, investors um, and take IDA into the Canadian market as well. I, I will have a question on Ida in a second, but I do want to talk about engagement a bit more. Heike, what is it like when you're working with the banks? What do your conversations with the underwriters look like? Uh, there, I, there are quite a wide array of underwriters, so curious as to um, how, how, what the bank involvement looks like in this process. Thank you. That's a, a very good question. And um, as you say, I mean, the banks are the, the intermediaries. Um, when we're preparing transactions, um, we speak to, to the banks and to their sales forces, to the salespeople who connect with the investors. So what we've done for some of our issues is um, we've hosted a, um, a sales force call, for example, um, on a specific topic. And I mentioned um, gender earlier. So um, in one particular case, we had um, one of our colleagues who works in operations um, on, on gender uh, join the call. And she was talking, you know, directly to the sales team um, about the types of programs that, that we support. And I remember one call, it was really um, very rewarding. There was a salesperson um, actually on, on the West Coast um, who, who just, uh, uh, before we ended the call, she thanked us for what we do. And it's, it's what the World Bank has been doing for decades. You know, we work in countries, um, uh, but it's really rewarding for us to, to, to hear from our colleagues who are, are on the ground um, and then to, to see and hear the reactions um, of some of the, 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 the salespeople from the banks um, as they um, uh, um, helps them communicate with investors as they're selling the bonds, essentially, it helps them sell the story. Um, and so that's how we work very closely with the banks on this. Um, and then as Andrea has mentioned, you know, there's a, a lot of direct engagement as well, direct conversations with um, investors. And many of them are just um, starting to, to focus their investment strategies on purpose. So while in the past they focused um, on the financial terms exclusively um, and expanded that to look at um, environmental, social and governance risks of their investments, they're more and more looking for this positive um, aspect, you know, making, making a difference with their investments. And so in, in, for, for those types of investors, um, uh, especially the World Bank um, is, is, is a good place, place to go. Uh, yeah, you had spoken, Andrea, about IDA, which you had mentioned was lower income communities generally, and that they hadn't, uh, you hadn't really worked with the Canadian market yet. Are there specific challenges that IDA is facing right now? IDA um, accessed the capital market, I mentioned, for the first time um, two years ago. 
And we're, we're actually, and IDA has been in existence. You know, IDA is new to the capital market, but it's not a new entity. It's, 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 it's a strong entity rated AAA like IBRD, um, needs to be funded only by um, donor contribution. And a couple of years ago, um, to increase, um, um, the donors um, decided to leverage um, either strong capital base to be able to raise additional funding to increase either reach um, from a development um, angle. So the challenge um, for, for, for uh, um, I wouldn't say the challenge for either, one of the, 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 the key um, focus is for us to really educate investors about the strong financial, you know, the strong, either strong financial base, either new um, financial model, and, 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 and also to ensure that either um, success across the various, as we roll either into the various markets, either have issued in the US dollar market successfully, in the Euro market successfully, and in the GDP market um, successfully, and also in the SDK market as well. So over time, we have raised um, over um, $5 billion last year just um, for, for IDA. And over time, as IDA program increases, um, particularly in this key period, as IDA also helped, you know, um, the um, lower countries, which are significantly impacted um, by COVID, um, it's the, the challenge is really to be able to roll IDA out uh, um, to investors in, uh, in, in, um, in a manner that will ensure that either uh, uh, um, success globally um, is, is key. And uh, I think we have time for one more question here. Heike, you had mentioned that uh, this renewed interest in ESG from, uh, from investors has really created more of an eye on the World Bank and uh, its, its fundraising programs. How do you describe how much more interest you've been getting uh, from new new investors that you perhaps hadn't seen before? So there's a lot of interest. Um, I think as time goes on, people are becoming more and more aware of the global challenges that we face. So really not just climate, but also um, social challenges globally. And Andrea uh, mentioned the um, increased issuance um, for the World Bank, for IBRD, um, for COVID. Um, we, we issued several bonds, including a Canadian dollar benchmark bond. And I think there was just a, a lot of interest there from investors. Again, the financial aspects have to be there. So you have to have a solid financial product, a safe product. Um, but if you can also show, and this is something that we're doing more and more with our impact reporting, if you can show how you're using the funds and that by buying your bonds, investors not only get a very good investment, they also get, um, in addition to that, a social return. Um, in um, having a, a positive impact, it, it helps. So we're seeing a lot more interest um, across the curve from different types of investors for, for these investments, for these bonds.